Hello, this is Kathy Brooks at Centralia College and I'm going to attempt to make a video on how I've been painting some watercolors lately. I call these fingernail chrysanthemums because I use my fingernail mostly to paint them. I do have to give credit where credit is due. I originally got the idea for these from leanspainting.com. He has some amazing paintings on this site and some fantastic instructions and tutorials, but I had trouble doing them. So I went off on my own little task of doing things. So these are my results based on his inspiration. For supplies on this, you need some paint. The only paints I use in these are a yellow, a blue, and a red, and the pictures you're seeing in this video were all made with the same yellow and blue and reds. Uh, some little cups to hold the paint, a container of water so you can clean your brush, a brush can be a really cheap brush, we're not going to use it too much in this particular assignment, uh, paper towels, lots of those, a sharpie marker, some clean water, and some paper. Now for specifics on what I'm exactly using, I am using Winsor Newton Transparent Yellow Paint, Winsor Newton Prussian Blue Paint, and Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose Paint. My Sharpie marker is an ultra-fine Sharpie, and I happen to be using 300-pound paper. It's a little expensive, but I like it so much. It's thick, it doesn't buckle very much. I usually buy the 300 pound paper in watercolor blocks, so they're all glued together on the four sides, so they stay very nice and flat. It's a little expensive, but I like it, so I go ahead for that. So let's kind of look at a close up of one of the flowers that I drew in this, and I want you to notice a few things. One, it's pretty irregular and messy actually. From close up, it's kind of a mess. From far away, I think they look pretty cool, but again, as we're working on it up close, we may not be too impressed with it. I want you to notice how the color starts with yellow at the center, goes out through your red, and then out towards blue on the edges, and the colors are kind of mixed together. I want you to notice how the petals go out, and they're all kind of scritchy on the edges, and some of them just fade out to nothing, and that's fine. I want you to notice how there are lots of petals, and they basically radiate out from the center, but they do go in different directions sometimes. They don't all go down to the right, for example. Some go up, some go down, some go across. Gravity does tend to pull the petals down, so we want to kind of remember that. As far as the colors blending, you notice they do kind of run together, sometimes well, sometimes not so well, and that's okay. If you look at the Sharpie marker, you'll see it's all shaky and scribbly and uh, kind of irregular. Uh, my hands shake when I do this, and that's okay. You'll notice if you look at an individual petal, pretty much none of them are totally outlined. It is not one continuous line outside the edge of the petals. Rather, there's a little bit on each petal but there is not a zigzag zigzag line going around the outside edge of the petals. Also notice the petals tend to meet together um, near the outer edge of the flower. There are no huge gaps between the petals. They tend to be pretty one after another after another and touching each other at the bottom, shall we say. The center, you'll see there's some Sharpie marker basically outlining the center of the flower. But again, it's irregular. It doesn't touch necessarily. There are gaps, there are white spaces left in this flower. That's all the effect we are after in this. So let's get started on this project. The first thing we're going to start with is a background. So these are the supplies I've laid out for my project. You can see I've got a coffee cup with some water. I've got like little Dixie cups with my paint in it. And again, I'm using Prussian blue, transparent yellow, and quinacridone rose. I've tried the samples so I can see if I think they're uh, intense enough. I wouldn't say they're super intense paints, but probably medium intensity. I've got them mixed in the three cups very well. I've got some brushes. I'm not even sure if I'm going to use the smaller or the bigger yet, or both. It doesn't really matter in this. I have my ultra-fine Sharpie marker, which I'm not even going to use for a while, so I'm just going to set that aside. And I have my paper. This particular piece of paper, I've gone ahead and decided what size mat I'm going to use. And I've actually marked on the paper some lines a little bit larger than the opening of the mat. So when I do put this inside a mat, the lines will be hidden. I've made the lines a little darker than I normally would so they'll show on the camera. Usually they're fairly faint lines. But here you can see I've already decided the finished size of the inside that will show inside the mat of my painting. So let's get started.
I've gone ahead and wet my paper. I'm not sure if the glisten will show here. It's a little bit damp still, but I'm going to start adding some colors, and there's really no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just going to add all three colors, different places, and let them kind of merge together. So I think I'll start with some yellow, and I'm just going to kind of splash it on. It really doesn't matter. I want to make sure I clean my brush between uses. So I'll rinse off my brush well. I'm going to grab some of the quinacridone rose. I kind of like the rose a lot. And then I'll add some of the Prussian blue. Now what I want to do is I want these colors to blend together. I want them to run together, actually. So I may have to add more water to this. I can tip it up and let the colors run. You do have to be careful doing this because sometimes they'll run all over your table. These colors will also dry lighter than what you see right now. So maybe I'll turn it the other way. If I think it needs a little help, that it's not running well, I can use water. If you get globs of paint and it seems to be running a little out of control, you can put water, uh, uh, paper towels to sop up the mess. I'm thinking this is a little darker than what I want overall. So I'm going to let some colors run a little bit more with water. I'm kind of liking this. A little more water up at the top, perhaps. I want most of the area covered. And when I think it's good, I'm going to stop. I'm going to wait a little bit. And when it's almost dry, I'm going to add some spots of water where I think I'm going to have my flowers. In the upper right corner, I like this little red spot inside the yellow. I think I'll put a flower there. And I know I want one probably on the left side somewhere. And I'm not great at composition, so I'm not worried about that. It's just where I think I want them. But if you add drops of water, nice big drops, the paint will run away from it, and that will then become the center of our flower. I'm using a dry brush now and actually taking off some of the paint. I'm going to add another glob of water at this top right spot. And I'll use my brush to sop up with some more. And I think maybe that's good enough for now. Now I'm just going to let it dry. <laughs> 